just wonder where you started announcing. Um, was it out east or out west? Um, now you're in Ontario, but you're he's from the east coast, I believe. Just wondering where you started your career. Began my working career as an announcer in Edmonton, Alberta, February of 06. I did call a few races prior to that on Prince Edward Island. Uh, matinee racing is uh, fair racing. It's non-betting stuff like O'Leary, Tyne Valley, Kensington, Prince Edward Island. Places like that. I guess O'Leary, Prince Edward Island, uh, memorial track for Charlie Willis in O'Leary. That would have been my first real non-paying event as an announcer so yeah i would ask them uh what what got them into announcing what got me into announcing uh you know what i've been involved in horse racing since i was 10 years old um my dad passed away uh, about 10 years ago and uh you know he had a lot of dreams that he wanted to fulfill but he didn't get a chance to do those i made sure that i was going to fulfill some dreams and this was one that i wanted to do call horse races so I just followed a dream and this is where I am. Where does the sugar nickname come from? The sugar nickname comes from Summerside, Prince Edward Island. Uh, I coached a, a fine group of kids uh, probably 10 years ago and uh, a lot of the kids had nicknames on the bench and they wanted to give their coach a nickname too uh, seeing as my pockets were all always full of candy uh, sugar developed from that. I mean, they wanted to they wanted to call me the Candy Man at first, but that wasn't sitting well with the parents. One of the mothers suggested sugar, and uh, it worked well on the bench, and it's worked well in racing. And uh, yeah, my booth here it's full of gumdrops and jujubes and everything else right now. So yeah, sugar it still works for me. Who was his favorite announcer when he was starting out, and did he base his style on anybody? Favorite announcer. Probably growing up uh, was a gentleman in Charlottetown, Kevin Boomer Gallant. Um, I always liked uh, tuning in on uh, radio, CFCY, or places like that to, to listen to his race calls during Old Home Week if I couldn't make it. Um, as far as when I began announcing, I just wanted to be, be myself. Um, there's probably a little bit of every announcer I've ever listened to in me. Um, that's how I roll. Uh, I'd, I'd like to know how they follow the horses the way they do. I, I've sat up in the stands with announcers and, and it just blows me away how they can just call them eight or ten horses all and know them right off, right away where, where they're sitting and, and then what horse it is. That, that How they can pick them out and, and follow them like they do. When I first came into London, uh, it, it's a brand new track with brand new horses to me and new drivers as well, so there was a lot of coloring going on. I, I still carry my markers in the booth with me. It's more or less coloring in the number pads of the horse next to the horse, uh, maybe putting the driver's silks colors uh, next to the horse's name too, and from there, getting used to it, getting used to the names of the horses, the names of the drivers, and, and who, I'm, who I'm calling out there. Uh, right now, I'm pretty comfortable here in London. I would like to know how much difference there is between announcing a thoroughbred race to a standard bred race. Yeah, thoroughbred racing, uh, I got involved with that in, in Grand Prairie in 08, and uh, it was a non-paying gig at that point. I just didn't know if I would be able to do it. I was brought up in harness racing, right? So um, I took a chance at, at being a thoroughbred caller up there, and. Uh, they enjoyed me enough that uh, Edmonton offered me a thoroughbred job in 2010. The difference between the two, uh, thoroughbred to standardbred racing, thoroughbred calling to me is more of a challenge, whereas harness racing, it's what I grew up with, it's what I know. Um, there's a lot more coloring with markers involved with thoroughbred racing, that's all I can say. How do you come up with all the funny sayings and just the little ad-libs that you stick in in, in the middle of a race, things are going so fast and they always find ways to stick something in there that just, well, catch your attention. I, I like, personally, I like it, but I, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, all kinds of announcers try to throw in a little bit in there, uh, whether it's for entertainment purposes or, or just a laugh for the horse people that are racing. Um, I try not to do it too much. Sometimes I just can't help myself. Um, where do I come up with those sayings? Uh, I, I watch a lot of uh, Sports Center, and uh, these guys uh, that are that are commentating, uh, uh, whether it's a hockey game or even the 
the uh, broadcasters themselves uh, re showing replays. You know, I'll pick up on little things, and if I can dress it up in a way that will fit into a horse race, then I'm going to use it at some point. I'd like to ask Sugar Doyle uh, how he likes it in London so far. Big move for him, and uh, you know he, he went from the West Coast, uh, getting a little further east again and closer to PEI. So, uh, Sugar, uh, how, do, how do you like it so far? And uh, hopefully, the answer is that he does like it. <laughs> you know what, uh, London. Uh, I remember driving here. Uh, I stayed in Canada the whole way. Came across the prairies and up around northern Ontario. I showed up in London. And I, when I arrived, it's the Western Fair is on, and I walk in, and there's concerts going on and everything. I just loved it. Winter came, and uh, it wasn't a good winter here, I'm told. Uh, probably 30 years ago, they might have had a winter like this, but I'm hoping for a better winter next time around. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm just hoping to come back here in the fall and uh, pick up where I left off. London's great. Just where he likes it better, uh, Alberta or out here. Um... Uh, I've been in both, so just uh, I know it's cold in both spots. So <laughs> which which place he likes better? You know what? Uh, it, it's it's the same with this here London winter thing. It was a bad winter here. People say, well, you must be used to the the bad weather, the cold weather in Alberta. It's not the same at all. Alberta has dry cold. Uh, Ontario has damp cold. Uh, I do favor the dry cold. I, I must say, but. Uh, I think I can get over it. Question for Sugar Doyle, since we're London guys, do you really love Trevor as much as you let on you do? I don't know where this comes from. I mean, James McDonald and Billy Davis are always at, oh, Henry, give him the old Henry call. It's not like that. Tre Trevor does what he does out there. I do what I do. Uh, you know what? I'm a fan for the most part. Uh, I, I cheer on all our drivers here. If Sparling's having a big night, you're going to get the spark call. If... Uh, you know, McDonald's getting a big night out there. James McDonald, he's going to get the jam pie call. I still have yet to call Trevor Henry O. Henry, so I don't know where that comes from. I'd, uh, I'd ask him who he likes better, Billy Davis or Trevor Henry. <laughs> <laughs> who do I like better, Billy Davis or Trevor Henry? You know what? Me and Billy, we go way back. Uh, I was in Edmonton on the hub rail. Well, on, I was a rail bird for his qualifying drive so we go way back and uh, he's from the west and that's where I got my start in the west so uh, me and Billy yeah we're, we're pretty good guy we both like Metallica uh, Trevor Henry though I'm getting to know him um, he, he's, he's a good fellow too I, I like all our drivers here in Ontario and uh, the more I get to know them the better it is. So. Sugar what's your plans for this summer? Plans for the summer um, we're going to finish up with the Molson Pace here on Friday, May 30th. Uh, I'm going to spend a couple more weeks in Ontario. I'm going to see my first North America Cup in person, which I'm really looking forward to. That's why I'm sticking around for a couple more weeks. After that, it's the drive to Prince Edward Island where I'll uh, meet with family and uh, celebrate my mom's 81st birthday. I'm looking forward to that. You know, what's your next move? Where are you going after this, you know? So, and wish him the best of luck wherever he goes. He's a good friend. Uh, you know what, uh, plans after this. I just want to be happy, I just want to be healthy. Th those are two big things for me. If it's in racing, that's great. If it's not, um, that's fine too. I, I like to live in the moment, so I, I don't put a whole lot of faith into thinking about uh, five and ten years down the road. I just uh, live for the moment and, and uh, that's worked for me. Uh, what do you love most about your job? Uh, the most I love about my job, uh, meeting great people. Um, I took a shot on uh, having a new home in, in Edmonton when I went there in 06, and there was people immediately took me under their wings, uh, the late Miles Ford, uh, guys like Mark Bradley, John Chappell, Ron Grayman family. It's just, it's a family atmosphere in horse racing. Uh, when I went to Edmonton, I went there as a horseman. Uh, I've raced horses. I've been a going to the track since I was 10. Uh, now I work in the business as a race caller. I still consider myself a horseman though. When the meet ends here at, at the end of May, I'm going back to PEI to help a friend jog horses and shovel shift for the summer. I'd like to know what uh, was his most exciting race that he probably announced. Uh, I've heard him do a lot of good calls, Sugar, over the years. And uh, what's his favorite call? 
the most exciting race that I've ever announced. Uh, there's been there's been lots. Uh, maybe one that stands out as a, a a top harness race that I've called Taj Mahal, May of '08 at Northlands. Uh, so many things went into that call that uh, it'll never happen again. I mean. Taj Mahal's at the top of the stretch, and I want him to move, so I'm saying, you know, he's got horse, move him. Uh, Taj Mahal made the move to the outside. He, he went on and win, and uh, track record 150 and 3, and uh, at the end of it, I said, that just happened. I mean, I've never used those calls and races before. I've never used them after. It's just just one of my finer moments in, in harness racing as a caller. Uh, thoroughbred racing, there was a little gray... Uh, Named Freedom's Traveler, uh, a lot of emotion went into that call a few years back at Northlands Park 2 in a Canadian Derby. It just, I've been very lucky. I just want to know what Sugar thinks his best call was ever. My best call ever? Taj Mahal was a nice call. Uh, a friend of mine, Mark Bradley, who I got to know really good, not from Charlottetown at the time, but out in Edmonton, he, he won a Philly pace with Outlaw Independence. Uh, that was... That was a, a nice race, and uh, I remember going back to the barn area after that day, and the trainer, Jim Martin, walking up to me, and uh, he just said, you know, Sugar Doyle, I love how you call a horse race. And you know, I felt pretty good about that. Uh, it's just, there's a lot of emotion goes into my race calls sometime, and uh, when people come and see me after a race and give me a little pat on the back, it just means a lot. Will the Molson Pace be the biggest race you've ever called? Molson Pace, it's got to be the biggest harness race I've ever called. Uh, got a world champion coming, possibly in foiled again. He's expected to be here. Um, I'm excited about th even the thought of calling him in a horse race and the way it's shaping up now. As I've heard of other top guns coming from throughout North America. It's going to be a huge night uh, for everybody that joins us. Uh, whether it's uh, off track or on track, it's going to be a huge night for me. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be tough to contain a lot of this emotion and excitement. Um, I'm going to bring it.